Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Next major phase in this house building project is going to be pouring the second floor concrete. And to do that, we're going to have to do some prep work to get the structure ready for the concrete. We're going to start out here by cleaning off about two and three quarters inches of rain that we got, um, blowing off the top deck with the leaf blower and then you're going to see I'm going to be running the leaf blower and my wife will be pushing water out of the bottom floor with a squeegee. Can I help you be? Yeah, you might as well start shaking, shaking and opening. We're going around and filling all of these cracks with expanding spray foam. Uh, we're just using the great stuff uh, crack and gap filler. I think it's like four dollars a can or something at Home Depot and Lowe's. Down the front wall. Okay. And then probably down that. So I'm going to basically do the perimeter and then start doing the. And where it hits the floor, just leave it be because it'll cure uh -huh. and it'll be easier to get. Yeah, because if you try to wipe it up, it's going to. You know, we thought, or, or we should have thought, after watching and laughing at Grand Designs, mm -hmm. that we would have said, we'll never make those mistakes. Yeah. Or, Sometimes mistakes are made for you. Well, I'm not going to get on the scaffolding and... We determined that some of these cracks would probably be easier to fill from the top and you know it was easier to put the foam in but the work actually ended up being harder because the way that these speed floor joists work there is an s section on the top cord that gets locked into the concrete and that's what provides a portion of its structural load bearing capacity or its strength. And what we figured out looking at this foam along that edge after it had dried is that that was going to create a big void around that S section that needed to be locked in the concrete. 
So we had to come back after this dried and cut all of that away so that just the small portion in the gap was all that remained and that entire section of the joist was in contact with the concrete. All right, folks, we are continuing to do the prep work to get this thing ready to pour. And what we discovered after we'd had a few days of rain is that about a third of this decking was not galvanized from the factory. So in order to prevent continuing corrosion and potential rust jacking in the future that would expand and release this decking from the bottom of the concrete, we're gonna treat it with a rust converter, sealer, and primer. What we're gonna use is some stuff called Coro Seal. Uh, we've been using it for <laughs> a few decades now on different projects that required us to treat rust. Uh, we used it on water containment structures, barges, boats, hot rods, you name it, we've used it on it pretty much. And the stuff works really well it's a water-based product, so it's easy to clean up. You can roll it on, brush it on, spray it on, and it, it just works fantastically well. What I'm going to put it on with is just a cheap Harbor Freight HVLP spray gun. It was like $17. And the reason I'm using this is because that product is an acid-based product and over time it will eat up the inside of your spray gun so we don't use a good high quality automotive spray gun or even one of our good airless sprayers when we're putting that stuff on we just get something that it, once it's eaten up we just throw it away and go buy another one so if you're thinking you might want to use this product doing you know car repair or whatever really good but go buy a cheap disposable spray gun or brush it on or roll it on so i'm going to go ahead and get started prepping this i need to get the standing water off of it get it hooked up get the spray gun adjusted and start spraying this stuff on because we got rain coming in again tomorrow Here we go. What you'll see is this stuff starts curing and working. Every place that there is active rust, it'll turn black. If there's no active rust, it'll dry clear. And once it's cured, it's a primer coat. You can put a finished coat right over it. You can put some sort of intermediate coat, whatever you're wanting to do to finish the material out. A lot of times on industrial stuff that we're just, you know, like a piece of equipment or whatever, 
We just put this on there and leave it. All right, so you can see that this has turned black. This stuff has converted the active rust into uh, black oxide. It, it's not a, uh, an oxide that degrades the base metal. It actually seals it. So I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not, but there are thin spots from where I put it on because it goes on clear to milky white it's kind of difficult to see sometimes and so what we normally do is put on the first coat and then go back and touch up the places that are thin and finish converting that once it converts it that black oxide is not an oxide that degrades the base metal so it it makes a sealed coating on it and prevents further corrosion. So, you know, that's fine to have trapped between the steel and the concrete, but that active rust, we want to get sealed off and converted because if it stays trapped in there in between the concrete and the steel, it'll continue to erode the steel over time. Once I finished going around and touching up the areas that looked thin on this first coat, I let this stuff cure for 24 hours and then came back and inspected it again. And what I found was that there was a significant portion of this that still had not converted completely. So I spent another about eight hours coating it again. And that's the way the product manufacturer recommends that you do this if you see that there is unconverted areas and you can tell because there's a difference in color you coat it again and it'll go ahead and finish the conversion process All right, folks, I think that's going to wrap this video up for today. Thank you for watching, and uh, y'all have a good day.